What is up guys, I'm Francis back here with the Driving School TV and I'm at Tottenham Driving Test Centre to bring you another driving test route. This one is not my driving test centre, I do not know Tottenham at all, so stay tuned if you spot any minors or majors, comment below and let me know, we'll debate them in the comments. Let's go driving. So on first look at Tottenham, one thing that I've noticed is this area has a lot of variable speed limit signs. The driving test centre Pretty old, dilapidated buildings. Got toilets, it's got everything you need though. And it's a good area to learn to drive in. So I'm gonna take it really slow out of the car park. Imagine your examiner, they do seven, eight driving tests every single day. And if you're whizzing over these speed bumps, oh, they're gonna get annoyed. So give them a nice, easy start and intro to the driving test. Give them a nice, calm, smooth ride. Oh, these bumps are massive. Imagine being a, honestly, imagine being a driving examiner here. This would get annoying. Anyway, we're back and out onto the road. Think about the things that you're gonna find here. What are we gonna encounter? We can see a 20 mile an hour sign. We've got really narrow roads, cars parked on both sides of them. Turn left. Turn left. Turn left. So you're gonna see meeting situations. Loads of meeting situations in Tottenham. The road markings here are very turn faded. Left, then turn left but I can see that there's a giveaway line, so I'm gonna take it nice and easy. Remember, this is the beginning of your driving test, so don't rush, take your time. If you feel nervous, plan ahead. That's the key to getting over your test nerves. Planning ahead is gonna get you so far. <sighs> take a deep breath, keep breathing. After 100 yards, turn left. Cool, and up ahead, Again, really narrow. Be planning for meeting situations. Turning left. Six car lengths is how far Turn back left. I'm signalling. Thanks. Heard it the first time. Cheers, Satnav. Cheers, Tom. Again, really narrow road. Are there any cars ahead? Start planning as soon as you get onto a new road about the kind of hazards that you're gonna get coming up. So, here, I'm moving back to the left. Checking my left mirror. And there's a car on coming. Less space, less speed, have you heard that one? If you've got less speed, I'm just easing off the gas to make the car slow down a little bit, then I'm gonna go back on the gas. I don't wanna look like I'm a learner. The driving test is an interview to get a proper driving license, so don't take advice about driving like a learner. Drive properly. Look at this road, it's nice and wide. I can see all the way down it. I'm driving at 20 miles an hour. If I get squeezed, like now, I'm just easing off the gas, making sure I check my mirrors so I know what's around me. And if I do that, I'm gonna keep everyone safe and let the examiner know that I know what I'm doing. I'm safe, I'm not a learner, but I'm driving within the rules. So let's have a look ahead. What can we see? After Another. Yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. Third exit, okay, cool. Roundabout coming up, third exit. I can see up ahead from that blue sign that it's a mini roundabout. Again, I'm planning well ahead because I don't know the area. I don't know Tottenham at all. Meeting situation, slowing right down. That guy was on the phone, did you see that? Anyway, and take the third exit. there we go. I don't know the area, so I'm planning well ahead. This is all you're gonna do. Hopefully, if you're taking a driving test here, you will have done enough lessons around the area so that you know what's coming up. But all I'm doing is planning ahead. I'm just thinking about what could happen to me next, and if it does, then I'll be ready to deal with it. There we go, nothing coming from my right, so I'm gonna make a move there. Wow. <laughs> Angry drivers in Tottenham, is that? If you drive in Tottenham and you're learning around here, comment below, is that the kind of theme for Tottenham? Is everyone in a bad mood around here? What is going on with the air in Tottenham? Wow. Again, just taking it nice and easy. I'm around the hospital. What kind of hazards do you reckon you could see around here? Emergency vehicles, sick people, people walking around quite slowly. Think about that. Think about that coming up next. Here we go, meeting situation potential. I'm checking my mirrors, making sure the examiner knows I know what I'm doing. Now I can see a massive van, so I'm just gonna slightly duck in here and make sure that he's got enough room to get past. Wow, is that a bus? You're welcome. Is that a bus converted into a kebab shop? That is genius. Last stop kebab, Donna shish falafel salad. I'll be back here later. 
<laughs> so it was interesting. Okay, cool. We're still on a 20 mile an hour speed limit, making sure that I don't pick up the speed too much. I want to look confident, but I don't want to go too fast. Can I fit two cars through here? Yes, but I'm bringing my speed down. Why? Less space, less speed. Yards. Turn left. 200 yards, turn left. Right, so I'm planning that into my drive. What's coming up next? What's that ambulance doing? Are they stopped? Am I gonna overtake an emergency vehicle? Look how close they are to the curb. They're not indicating, but I can see from that close to the curb and behind other parked vehicles, we're gonna go straight past them. Okay, here we go. Actually, I can see ahead. Look at these road markings. The sat nav's telling me to turn left, but I can see that this is a continuation. So I'm sure that if you're from around here and you do your test here, you will have practiced this and you will see sat nav's not always giving you correct information. If I signaled there, could have been misleading, could have showed that I was trying to pull over, which is not the case. So I didn't signal there because the road is not a new road. It's just a continuation of the same road. Then keep left. Turn right, then keep left. No problemo. Looks like we're coming up to a little bit of traffic here. Fast forward. Every time I set off, I'm checking the left and right mirror. Why is that important? Quick one. It's important because anything could be coming around you. Motorbikes could be overtaking on your right. Cyclists could be coming past on the left. If you're moving away and not checking your mirrors, then you're gonna have a problem. Make sure that you're checking your mirrors. You know this, you've done driving lessons. If you're not with a driving instructor, if you're with your friends and family, then make sure that you're watching YouTube videos about how to drive properly. I know your mum probably thinks that she's the world's best driver. Your dad probably thinks he's God's gift to motor vehicles, but you can always pick up some tips. Then keep left. And people don't always drive properly. People get into bad habits. It's probably been a long time since your mum or dad did a driving test. So make sure that you're up to date on new rules. Let's go right, and I'm gonna indicate from here, just under six car lengths away, but we're going quite slowly so you can afford to indicate a little bit later. This looks like we're going out onto a pretty busy road, or it's gonna join a dual carriageway if the sat nav is showing me correctly. As I approach the end of this road, I'm already looking right. I can see a car, so I'm gonna stop, but I was planning on going in case I could. Remember, giveaway lines don't mean stop they mean give way to anything past that point so here we are on to a busy road let's look at where we're going next we're going to keep to the left so i'm just going to check my mirrors and move across to the left in anticipation of what is going to happen to me next looks like it's getting a little bit busier down here 200 yards keep left then Bear right. Keep left and bear right. Really important to plan ahead, especially if you don't know the area. I left, am then bear right. keeping left, but I'm not in the left lane. Look at that, that's a left turn only lane. She's saying keep left, that's quite misleading. If I kept to the left there, I'd be going left. Remember, if you get into the wrong lane and you're on a bear driving right. test, then take the exit left. Make sure that you go the way that that lane tells you to. The examiner might want you to go straight on, but if you're in a lane that's got a left turn arrow in it, make sure that you turn left. Otherwise, you're disobeying a road marking and you will fail your driving test. But I planned ahead, I was able to mitigate that. So, we're going straight ahead from the left lane. Thanks, Satnav. Thanks for nearly making me fail my driving test. Keeping left again, yes, onto a dual carriageway. I think we're gonna come straight off it though. Yards, take the exit left, then turn left. Yes, we're gonna come straight off it. Okay, set, speed limit is going up to 50 miles an hour here, but only past that sign. So I'm making sure I stay at 30 and Take now exit. I can then speed up. That left. is really important. What's this white car ahead doing? She's trying to join the dual carriageway. Okay, bringing my speed up to 50, sh showing that I'm confident, showing that I know what the speed limit is and I'm confident using the car. But looking ahead, it says 30 up there. And I'm gonna make sure that I bring my speed back down to 30 or below before I pass that sign, 32, 31, 30. Change gear, great. Bus lane at any time, I'm not gonna use that. After 200 yards, turn left, then take the second left. Okay, cool, it's actually quite stressful doing a driving test where you don't know the turn roads. Left, then take the second left. So I made sure there that I waited until the bus lane had ended, the thick solid white line was gone before I moved into the left. Don't want to use a bus lane, not even a meter of it, if it's not available for you to use. Okay, I'm going to turn left in a minute. Checking my left mirror, where can I signal? You can see the junction there. Yards, turn left, then cross the roundabout and take the second Okay, exit. we've got a left filter arrow there. It's just changed turn to left, then cross the roundabout. a green light for everybody. If the arrow is pointing your way, that means you can go. 
roundabout next. I'm having to concentrate a lot, actually. After 100 I... yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit. Roger. Cross the roundabout, take the second exit. I'm slowing down well in advance. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. So that I've got time to look, plan ahead, know what's happening next. I reckon that this is going to turn into a town centre kind of area. Speed limit's still 30, I haven't seen any speed limit changes, but I'm definitely not gonna go as fast as I did on that road before. And I'm gonna plan ahead a lot more and look for things like the road squeezing me in. So I'm gonna slow down for that. Any parked cars on the left, I'm gonna slow down slightly for that. It just shows the examiner that you're aware of hazards. Okay, so coming up ahead, I can see all the way down the road. So I'm gonna increase my speed. I'm doing about 28, 29 miles an hour here. It's definitely safe too. There's nothing here that's going to impede me from going at the speed limit. There's no parked cars. I can see the pedestrians. I can see all the way down the road. So if anything was to happen, I'd have a lot of notice about it. That's really important. After 300 yards, turn left. 300 yards, turn left. All right. Smashing through this driving test route. Why? Because I'm a driving instructor. Have you spotted any mistakes yet? If you've spotted any, comment below. I haven't, but if you have, let me know. Uh, 130 yards. Look at that countdown on the sat nav. Turn left. Turn left. Where is it? I can see up ahead. Mirror, signal, position, speed. Dropping it down. It's a second gear. Definitely don't need first gear for that corner. I can see a 20 sign. Okay, noted. Now I'm in a 20 mile an hour speed limit zone. Really important to look out for those speed limits, especially if it's in an area that you're not familiar with. Okay, if you've practiced here loads, you'll be familiar with where the speed limits are, hopefully, if your instructor's pointing them out to you. But if you're not, then look at the beginning of roads to tell you that the speed limit's changing for that area, or at the end of roads to tell you that speed limits are changing for the area that you're moving into. Those are the main two places to look for speed limit changes. Saw one, now I know. Okay, look, I'm getting squeezed a lot here. I've dropped my speed down. I'm doing 13, 12, 12 miles an hour. I'm looking to the left as well because we're traveling really close to these parked cars. If I'm not looking at the left, I won't be able to see how close I am. Just open up your vision a little bit. If you've got the problem where you drive too close to parked cars, if your mom, dad, driving instructor tells you that, or if you've been on a driving test and you've got that mistake, they call it clearance to obstructions, make sure that you're opening up your vision a little bit and just look. Look at that traffic, look at the parked cars on the left and you'll be able to see so much more. It's like revelation when you tell people this. Oh my God, yeah, I could just look at the cars to see how close I am. So road, I'm looking, I'm not too right. close. Then take the second left. Turn right, second left, got it. Keep these in your mind as well so that you know what you're doing next. It helps you to plan ahead. So you know that you're gonna do something next and you know what it's gonna be. So you can look to the end of the road. Okay, look, it looks like a pretty standard junction. It's quite busy and I'm still checking my mirrors, looking out for the parked cars on my left. I'm keeping a nice one meter distance away and I'm keeping my, oh, thanks for pulling over there, mate. Turn right, then take the second left. Check my mirrors, no panic, move around and indicate. Looking in advance, this is very open junction, so I don't have to stop because there was nothing coming. All right, Just scanning the pavements as I come to a pedestrian crossing, making sure that I keep it safe. Oh, look, car park, After massive. Turn left. Massive car park. I bet they'll do some bay parking in there. Turn left. So we're doing a left bend here. But if you look on the sat nav, the left turn is in 130 yards. So I'm not indicating there because it's a continuation of the road. I'm looking to the end of the road. And we're going to turn left here. Mirror, signal. Turn left. Make sure you notice that keep clear sign on the floor. I spotted it. I know that I can clear it though, which is why I've gone past it and not stopped before it. Nice gap on my right. Smooth steering around the bend. This looks like it's going to get busy. Where are After we? 300 yards, cross Literally, the where am I? Edmonton Green. Then cool. Take the Massive left. roundabout coming up. I'm sliding across to the right because I can see on that roundabout I'm turning right. This road is pretty busy, so if I stick to the left for too long, I'm going to have trouble getting to the right later. So I'm moving to the right, making sure that cross I'm not going to. And take the second exit. Not going to impede then anyone. Take the second left. Mirror signal. Ah, oh, it's a traffic light controlled roundabout. Even easier. Point to note on this one, if you're at a traffic light controlled roundabout, when your light turns green, go. If your light turns green, the traffic from the right will be held. I've seen a lot of people make this mistake and I always make sure I explain it to all my learners. If your light goes green and you're entering a roundabout, the traffic on the right's light will be red. Don't pause, don't hesitate because the traffic behind are gonna start beeping. You will fail your driving test by not understanding how to use roundabouts. That'll be frustrating. So make sure that you practice stuff like this a lot. So because I'm turning right, I'm gonna use the inside 
track the inside lane. Not rushing, it's a roundabout. I don't need to rush roundabouts. Don't need to show that I'm super, super confident and go mental speeds around roundabouts. Okay, just past the last exit before mine, so I'm gonna start signaling left to exit Edmonton Green Station. Interesting. War Memorial, nice. Once my red light turns green, I'm gonna go. I'm not worried about what else is happening. The traffic light is telling me and controlling me and making sure that I use the roundabout safely. So, here we are exiting the roundabout nice and smoothly, looking out for any hazards. Gonna cancel my signal there, it's a quite a long bend, so it's gonna take a while for the car to cancel it automatically. Moving out from around this park van, so I'm checking my mirrors, watching out for the pedestrians. I'm keeping my speed quite low here because it's After a busy area. Yards. Turn left. Roger, turning left. It's a busy area, so I'm, I know the speed limit's 30, but I'm not gonna go at 30 miles an hour. The examiner won't Turn think left. you're confident, he'll think you're reckless. Turning left. As I enter this road, I'm looking out for any speed signs to tell me that the road speed is different on this road. Nope, so we're still in the 30 mile an hour speed limit zone. Definitely not safe to do 30 miles an hour down this road though. Imagine, it's not appropriate to always do the speed limit. Speed limit is not a target. It's the absolute maximum if the road conditions are perfect. Just easing over these speed bumps. I'm not braking. Don't brake over speed bumps. It just shows that you're doing the wrong speed for the whole road. Speed bumps don't mean this tiny little strip of road is slower. It means the whole road needs to be slower. Why have they put the speed bumps in? Because of the conditions of the road. Look how busy it is. There's parked cars. I'm quite close to them. I need to lower my speed. It's very residential. It's actually quite busy here. Okay, so I'm looking ahead, planning well ahead, especially in an area like this. Look at that van coming towards me. I've planned it. After I'm moving across yards, and slowing down. Right. 200 yards, turn right. Roger, okay. Gliding over the speed bumps. All I'm doing is releasing my gas. Then, once I'm over the speed bump, gently back on the gas again. There we go, off the gas, back on the gas. Turning right, looking into the road. Got the sign, 20 miles an hour. So now we know we're in a 20 zone. Not that we could go much faster than that. How fast do you reckon the appropriate speed for this road is? 20? Definitely not. I'm doing 18 right now, but I'm looking out for everything going on ahead. Bringing my speed down to 15 over the bumps. Not through braking, just through gas control. All right, let's have a look at this. This looks interesting on the sat nav. There's two roads to turn left into. I'm not going to be misleading. I'm just slowing down gently and indicating once I go past the first one. Right, 20 miles an hour. I think I can do 20 miles an hour down here. There's no road markings. I'm just driving in the middle of the road. And if I do that, I'm quite far away from the parked cars, so I'm keeping everyone safe. If there was a pedestrian to walk out from behind that van, I'd have a lot of time to react because I'm not right next to it. Okay, turning left. Is it left here or? I can't see a giveaway line. Okay, there it is. Mirror, signal. Looking to the right, a nice open junction again so we can go without stopping because I can see from miles back that it was clear. Over the speed bump, this one's going to be pretty bouncy. No, it wasn't. Learning so much today. Tottenham's a nice area for a After driving test. Yards, I like it. Go right on the roundabout and take the second exit. Okay. Thanks to this guy for stopping. This lady turning right, right on the on roundabout. The roundabout and take the second exit. What's this guy doing? Why are they not moving? All oh, right, so I'm gonna go if you're not moving on my right. Guys, you know you don't need to say thanks to people when you're driving around. If someone lets you go, you don't need to say thanks. The examiner will say thanks for you. So After if you see yards, your examiner doing this, the doesn't mean that you're exit. making a mistake. Then turn left. Just means that they're saying thanks to people. It's like, because we're British, we like to say thanks. We like to be polite. It's all good. So I'm still in the 20 zone. I'm making sure that I'm not Cross peaking over 20. And take the second exit. Then turn left. Roundabout, second exit, left. Cool. Second exit is straight on. I can see that from the picture. What are you doing, mate? What are you doing, mate? Give way to the right now. It's cool. It's cool. We're on a driving test. We're keeping it calm, collected, sweet. When other people don't drive properly, it's not our problem. It's their problem. We just deal with it safely and smoothly. Okay, so a lot could happen on this road. I cannot see the pavements at all because there's parked cars in the way. After 200 yards, turn left, then at the end of the road, turn right. It's actually starting to rain. If it starts to rain on your driving test, make sure that you put the wipers on. Don't wait for the examiner to ask you to put the wipers on. That's important because they can mark you down under ancillary controls if you don't spot that it's raining and react appropriately. 
just gonna ease my car up here. Then if I'm gonna edge forward, I always tell people to let the examiner know that you're edging forward. So they know that you're not just trying to set off when it's not safe. So if I'm edging, I'm just gonna edge forward here. I'm just gonna edge forward here, yeah, cool, thanks. Yep. And then they know that they don't have to get near the brake. You're not planning on setting off when there's a big fat Nissan cash car in front of you. Or if you're at a giveaway line, they know that you're not trying to set off into the road, into the path of oncoming traffic. You're just edging forward to get a better look. Just edging forward to get a better look, yeah? Sweet. Okay, we're waiting here. I'm not gonna sit on a pedestrian crossing because that's a fail. And it looks like it's clear to the right. My light is green to the left. And I can signal now. And cross this, what are we on now? Then turn left. This is the north circular. Interesting. Turn right, then turn left. Straight away, I'm turning left. I'm looking After at the sat nav. Yards, turn left. Cool. Then turn left. All right. I'm not waiting for her to talk to me. I'm always looking at that picture so that I can turn predict left. what I'm then doing next. I can plan left. for it. She sometimes gives misleading and annoying instructions, which don't make sense. And if I'm looking at that picture, I'm not going to get trapped by that. I'm not going to fall for a misleading instruction. 200 yards turn left, right. Okay, so if I just listen to the 200 yards turn left bit, I'm going to try and look for a left turning now. But if I'm looking at the sat nav, I can see that there's a bend in the road and then I'm turning left. Really important to check the screen as well as listen to the instructions. That car came a bit wide there. Okay, so here's my left turn. Mirror, signal position, lady crossing the road. I'm just going to slow down in advance to let her cross. If a pedestrian is in the road, they've got priority. We are really close to the test centre. I like Tottenham. Tottenham's great. Thanks to everyone who requested Tottenham. All the guys on the YouTube that requested Tottenham and thanks, shouts out to Ibs who requested Tottenham as well. Asked me to come down and do a test route in Tottenham. I'm a fan. It's too far for my learners or me to come up here again to take a test here. But if I moved around here, I wouldn't mind taking a test in Tottenham. I would be confident that it's a nice test centre to pass in. There's tricky bits. There's always tricky bits in all test centres. Here we go, 20 miles an hour. I wasn't doing more than 20 miles an hour anyway, because the road is narrow. Thinking about meeting situations here. That van, I'm not going to hesitate. I'm going to go because they can... They're not going to... Obviously... Cheers, mate. I could have easily pulled over, but no drama. I'm looking to my left because I'm super close to the parked cars on the left. I'm looking at the left. I'm looking at how close that I am to those parked cars so I don't make the mistake of driving too close. Skip lower up ahead. I'm slowing down in advance. There's no point barreling up to it. If there's a hazard ahead, start braking early so the examiner knows you've spotted it. The examiner knows that you have taken into account the upcoming After danger. 200 yards, turn right, then cross the roundabout and take the first exit. Turn right. Oh, that next road's called White Hart Lane. Interesting. We must be near the football. All oh, right. Okay. Turning Turn right, right at the end of the road. Then cross the roundabout. Mirror. And take the first exit. Signal. Position. Slowing it right down. There's no road markings at the end of this road, but clearly we are feeding this road. This road is minor to that road. That's the major road. So I'm giving way to it. It's annoying when there's no road markings on a like fancy bit of road like this. It confuses you when you're first learning to drive. I know, we've all been there. But just think of minor to major. Theory test stuff. Slowing it down nicely for the roundabout because I don't know the area. I'm making sure that I plan well ahead. If you feel like, oh, I can't plan ahead, you're going too fast, you're driving too fast. Make sure that you slow yourself down so that you can start to catch up. If you don't know what's happening next, it means that you're driving way faster than your brain can operate. So slow down and start to look ahead. 20 miles an hour on the road signs, 30 miles an hour on the sat nav. Go right on the roundabout and take the second exit. Then you have reached your destination. Sweet, I don't know if they do at Tottenham, but at some test centers, they tell you at the start of the driving test, don't look at the speed limits. They tell you the sat nav is just for directions only, stuff like that. So we can see that on this road, the so speed limits right don't match up. And take the second exit. Make sure then that you're looking you out for them. Right on the roundabout, that car is going where? They're turning against me, but they're not, they are moving. Standard of driving in Tottenham is not massive. <laughs> not being rude, the standard of driving in Tottenham is poor, I'll be honest. Okay, so we're back at the driving test centre. You have reached your destination. Still 20 mile an hour speed limit zone. Top tip for this is indicate because there's a giveaway line. If we're entering a new road, which that was, 
then we need to indicate to enter it. The test center is just at the end of this, sticking to 20 miles an hour, and make sure that you remember that your driving test isn't over until the examiner says, switch off your engine, please. Once they say switch off your engine, then you can relax. But until then, make sure you don't make any silly mistakes. Okay, so taking it nice and easy over the bumps. Don't want to give my examiner whiplash. Oh, oh my God, there's absolutely no need for bumps that harsh. Honestly, it's ridiculous. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick bay park into this bay. And we'll end the driving test there. All right, so guys, that was Tottenham Driving Test Centre. Great, lovely test centre, lovely place to take a driving test. Standard of driving is not great, so keep an eye out for other people and never trust anyone's driving other than your own driving. Remember, guys, if you saw me making any mistakes, any minors, any majors, comment below. I'll read through all the comments and I'll be commenting back with you guys. If there's any other driving test news that you want me to cover, find me on Instagram at Francis the Instructor. Don't forget to give us a follow at TDS.TV. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.